Seven is directed by David Fincher, and it stars Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt. Seven is one of those movies that reminded me that cinema is in fact an art form. If I had to describe this movie, it would be a roller coaster ride with a brick wall at the end of it. Seven is a type of movie that takes you through various twists and turns, and every single one of them caught me by surprise. And this movie has an extremely shocking ending that makes this movie one of the most unforgettable experiences in cinematic history. This review will contain relatively minor spoilers, but I feel that the best way you can view this movie is by going in completely blind and having all the twists and turns take you by surprise. I'm not going to get in detail about this film's ending, though I will talk about it, but not the plot details, if you know what I mean. So, if you want to go into this movie completely blind, I would just recommend clicking off this video, because, well... I am going to talk about some plot details that could be considered a little spoilery. This film follows two detectives, David Mills and William Somerset. These two are practically polar opposites. David is a very emotionally driven character, while William is a very logical driven character. William is a bachelor who lives alone and is on the edge of retirement, while David is a young and ambitious detective who is married to his high school sweetheart Tracy, who is played by Gwyneth Paltrow. This is kind of a take on the good cop, bad cop routine, but at the same time it doesn't feel cliche. It still has a spark of originality in there. Also, this film has a very dirty and very grungy feeling to it. This really gives you a perspective on the setting of this film. As soon as the super stylish intro came up, I knew I was in for a treat. This film follows the investigation of a murderer who goes around killing people based off of the seven deadly sins. Off the bat, this is a really interesting concept. The combination of the seven deadly sins and a true crime murder story just breeds a really interesting and compelling narrative. The murders that take place in this film are extremely grisly and disturbing, but at the same time this movie isn't a gore fest. There is still a lot left to the imagination. The murders are never actually shown, but we hear a lot about them, and we do see the aftermath. Maybe in a way, this is the most disturbing part of this movie, because we are left to imagine how these people were murdered, and, well, what happened to them, and what they had to go through. The scene where we discover the victim of the sloth category feels like a scene straight out of a horror movie. This film leaves you scratching your head and makes you ask questions, like how can the human body endure torture for such an elongated amount of time? There are some pieces to this puzzle that just don't get solved by the end of this movie. This movie leaves the audience to uh, solve the puzzle and to figure things out by themselves. It's left to everybody's own interpretation, and I love it when movies do this. This film is just super suspenseful. There is tension 100% of the time. Even in the slower scenes, you can feel a certain amount of dread. Like, you can kind of feel how the tables can very quickly turn in a blink of an eye. At the same time, nothing feels predictable. Like what I said earlier, every twist and turn took me by surprise. Throughout this movie, I had no idea where Fincher was going to take this film. I'm not going to say much about the third act. Like, I'm not going to get into details about it. Since this is one of the best third acts in cinematic history, only really rivaled by, I gotta be honest with you, The Empire Strikes Back. There's a certain scene that takes place in a car before the big third act reveal, and I had no idea what was going to happen to these characters or what these characters were going to do. 
The suspense was just on another level, though the ending to this film is a lot to take in. Yes, it's very dark and disturbing, but at the same time it feels 100% appropriate for this film. It puts everything together so nicely, but not in exactly the most conventional way. Once the villain's evil plan is finally revealed, everything just seems to make sense. All, most questions that you had are now answered, and I don't want to use the word satisfying because this ending is just so grisly, but it makes this whole experience feel complete. This is one of the most shocking endings in cinematic history. It leaves you wondering, what's going to happen to these characters? And yes, I am extremely happy that there is no such thing as 7-2. I love the idea of interpretation, of leaving everything to interpretation. Honestly, I think David Fincher would roll his eyes at the idea of 7-2, or maybe it would be called 8. That was a terrible joke. I would like to apologize. Oh, so another thing about the ending of this film, it really makes you realize how invested you were in these characters. Oh, so in this film, Brad Pitt probably gives one of the best performances of his career. You can really feel his utter shock and devastation. Okay, maybe I've said too much. If you have not seen Seven, make it a priority. I could not recommend this film enough. And because of that, Seven gets an S. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my review of Seven. And if you did, make sure to give this video a like. And if you want more content like this, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell notification so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. And shout out to Puff the Magic Dragon and Patrick Wilson. Thanks for watching.